Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, 2010 has come and gone, at, at least in a parliamentary sense. I convey the Green Party's thanks to you, sir, for your patience and fortitude and skill in handling this august, if rather unruly, institution. Thanks to all staff who labour here to keep us functioning but get no public recognition. Their courtesy and devotion to their job is unfailing, and we thank them for making ours not only possible, but more pleasant through their good nature. I acknowledge the ushers who greet us, the security staff who protect us, Bellamy's who feed us, librarians who inform us, and the messengers, travel staff, and everyone in the clerk's office, not least the select committee staff, who strive to help us think clearly and sensibly, not an easy task. And not least our own party staff, executive assistants, out of parliament people, and administrative research and media staff. As we bask in the sun and reflect on the year, most will combine a sense of achievement with some apprehension over what we have not achieved, particularly, I think, on climate change from Copenhagen to Cancun. 2010 has seen its human drama around the world and here in New Zealand. We might ask where we are heading as a nation and indeed as a global community. We bipedals are a strange mix of brilliance and stupidity, and I do not mean just the Greens. We flew our first solid plane, yet pumped carbon into the atmosphere faster than ever. We trapped antimatter in CERN under Geneva, yet we cannot rid ourselves of malaria. We clocked 10 years of continuous space living, and it is 41 years since we walked on the moon, yet we are killing life here on Earth. Our shrinking global village, more transparent now through WikiLeaks, reveals some oddities as well. Dubai completed the world's tallest building, not much short of a kilometre high into the sky, gleaming and beautiful. Yet it cost one and a half billion, which could have gone to malaria eradication, and a major slump in the rental market has meant a vacancy rate of 92%. So we have a lot to learn, and we do not seem to be learning it in time. The world has suffered its natural disasters this year. The earthquakes in Haiti, Chile and China, and our own miracle in Christchurch, where a 7.1 close to the city returned no fatalities. Tragically, we were not so fortunate at Pike River. The volcanic eruption in Iceland gave us a foretaste of the disruption the global community will experience when climate change reaches danger level. Let me assure ACT that such a specific event is not necessarily due to climate change. Neither are the floods in Pakistan and Australia, the forest fires in Russia and Australia, or the landslides in Mexico, or the drought in China, Africa and Australia. What I do know is that the Optimum Population Trust concludes that Australia is overpopulated and its optimal population may be around 10 million. They may be right, they may be wrong, but they raise issues that can no longer be ignored. It seems that 6.7 billion on the planet may be too many for Earth. Here in New Zealand, we remain part of the global problem of unsustainable living, where humanity is overshooting the planet's ecological capacity by 40%. If there is one thing that defines the Green Party, it is sustainability. Truth is, we in the Green Party love this country too much to trash it for a few dollars. We prefer to look after it for its intrinsic value. Five overarching green goals drive our politics in 2010. We promote a smart green economy for New Zealand. We believe a fairer society will be better for everyone, including the rich. We love the land and we want to protect it. We embrace honest politics and we cherish safe and healthy food for ourselves and our children. Each Green MP has worked in different ways through 2010 to realise these goals. The fundamental divide between the Green Party and their government concerns economic growth. The government continues to cite economic growth as its mantra, neurotically seeking signs of recovery back to a growth pattern like a drunkard reaching for the bottle to get through the hangover. It talks of a balance between economic opportunity and environmental responsibility. But continuous growth will never result in balance, rather a trade-off in which degradation trumps conservation. This year, the Green Party more assertively promoted ecological economics as the alternative to the traditional neoclassical economics that underpins that growth addiction. 
The Sustainable Economics Conference we convened in the Legislative Council Chamber just last month brought together economists and environmentalists for a dialogue over the relationship between these policy areas and the need to strike a consensus among parties. I thank Minister Nick Smith and Labour's David Cunliffe for joining us and agreeing to participate in the dialogue, joining with me on a panel on the political perceptions of sustainability. This could be seen as the beginning of a constructive dialogue between National, Labour and Green parties over a 21st century macroeconomic policy that will preserve the planet and bring security and prosperity for all. I do not think there is a more important or constructive thing we could aspire to do together. Russell Norman voiced the concerns of many Kiwis when it comes to foreign ownership of New Zealand's strategic assets. We were pleased to see the government keep the current guidelines for the Overseas Investment Office after it originally wanted to weaken the rules. Russell has also cr critiqued the government over trade policy, especially the patent absurdities of the secretive TPP. We trust the government will see the light on this next year. And Dave Clendon has been promoting sustainable business throughout the country and has proposed to this House a Sustainable Development Commission. It's time for a fair society. Materia Ture's Mind the Gap campaign highlighted the obscene inequalities that have developed here in recent decades and the need for a sense of decency and an egalitarian ethic. The home insulation program, which Jeanette Fitzsimons pioneered with Labour, continues to live under this government. I shall maintain that cooperation with Minister Brownlee into 2011. In similar vein, Gareth Hughes's warm and healthy rentals campaign, including a member's bill to that effect, promises to transform for the better the way Kiwis live in their homes. A successful supplementary order paper by Kevin Haig will ensure that the Health, Quality and Safety Commission can rely on public funding. Catherine Delahunty's proposal for a Disabilities Commissioner persuaded the Government to establish just such an office. We are working to protect our land. Materia Ture helped save our national parks from mining. The Government changed its plans because Kiwis love their parks. Special thanks to the 47,000 who signed her petition. Public opinion also prompted action to stop factory farming in the Mackenzie Basin, an iconic landscape that most of us want to protect. Russell Norman broke the factory farming story and campaigned alongside environmental and animal welfare groups to save the Mackenzie. Russell was effective also over the Mangatainoko River. Fonterra reconsidered a plan to dump waste water in the river after we urged it to show leadership and stop polluting. Catherine Delahunty persuaded Trade Me to join us in saving rainforests and supporting the local timber industry. From this week, it allows sale of new Quila furniture only with a sustainability certificate. Kevin Haig is pursuing with the government a $4 million pilot project to prevent, protect New Zealand forests and native species with better pest control. Kevin is also continuing work with the Prime Minister on the National Cycleway. The voting public wants Parliament, above all, to practice honest politics. It was the Green Party under Materia Ture's leadership which led the charge to clean up the system for MPs' pay and expenses. Last year, the Greens voluntarily released our own expenses. By late 2010, Parliament had agreed to adopt our policy of an independent authority for MPs' pay. Materia also played a role in convincing the government to put in place campaign spending caps for elections as well as the MMP referendum. Keith Locke's Head of State Referendum Bill focused attention on how New Zealand wishes to structure its constitutional arrangements in the 21st century. It will live for another day. Our intervention on the Court's Remote Participation Bill helped ensure defendants retain the right to be present in a criminal trial. I pay tribute to Minister Simon Powell for his judgment on this issue. My new judge's pecuniary interest bill is attracting, nas attracting national and labour support. I look forward to working with Chris Finlayson on this. And, sir, we cherish safe and healthy food. Our animal welfare standards jumped with Sue Kedgley's phase-out of sour crates being adopted by the government. The Green Party was acknowledged for a decade of work to stop the cruelty. Sir, let this sound, lest this sound like so much braggadocio, let me assure this House that we do not believe we run the country. But we do set the agenda for change. And one day we shall. Thanks. The Honourable Rodney Hyde.